Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturva Medical College, Manipal. In this lecture, I will be discussing about the structural organization of proteins as a basis for understanding its function. I will be giving emphasis on hemoglobin and collagen structure. Before moving into how uh, the hemoglobin and collagen structures help in their functions, we will look into the different structural organization of proteins, how the proteins are organized. <coughs> we have different uh, structures of proteins in that uh, is the one is the primary structure of the protein. Primary structure of protein is nothing but is a linear chain of amino acids joined by one another by the peptide linkages. On one side we have a amino group then other side you have carboxyl group in between the amino acids are linked together by peptide linkage. Peptide linkage is formed by amino group of one amino acid with the carboxyl group of another amino acid with the release of a water molecule and this peptide linkage is a very strong linkage. It is a covalent linkage bond formed and uh, it is not uh, 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 you can't denature the uh, when the proteins are de undergo denaturation uh, the peptide linkage are linkages are not broken down. So, this is a strong linkage that is the primary structure. We also have the secondary structure the primary structure uh, uh, is uh, uh, wound or bent like uh, a alpha helical form we call it as a alpha helix and it can be seen in case of a beta sheet like structure, it may be anti parallel or parallel beta sheets. These are due to the hydrogen linkages, hydrogen bonds in between the amino acids, they cause these different secondary structures. We also have some super secondary structures like uh, uh, alpha loop, alpha structure, this is alpha, it is a loop and alpha structure, beta, alpha, beta structure beta meander. So, there are different super, super secondary structures are also available. Whereas, tertiary structure here it is a single polypeptide chain, it is a further three dimensional organization of the proteins. So, then the tertiary structure is there, it has the primary structure, then it has a secondary structures and uh, uh, multiple, uh, it gives a three dimensional structures uh, for example, like uh, myoglobin, Okay, that gives the tertiary structure. If there are many polypeptide chains are interacting to each other and uh, they form a quaternary structure example is hemoglobin. Okay, these are the three, four basic uh, protein structures we, we saw primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure. Let us move on to the how the structure of hemoglobin helps its function. Uh, we will see. Hemoglobin is a molecule that is present in the RBCs, it helps in carrying the oxygen. So, it is made up of two parts, heme and globin part. Globin is the polypeptide chain that is uh, um, made up of amino acids and heme is a protoporphyrin ring with iron in the ferrous form at the center. We have different protoporphyrin uh, nine uh, rings and then iron is present and this iron in ferrous form it forms a coordinated complex with a nitrogen, four nitrogen of the protoporphyrin ring and uh, two bonds with uh, proximal histidine F8 and uh, one is attached to the oxygen and then to the distal histidine E7. This is the structure of the heme. And what about hemoglobin? Hemoglobin, if I take for example, hemoglobin A, it is made up of four polypeptide chains, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1 and beta 2. Two alpha and two beta chains are there 
and these alpha and beta chains are held together by strong hydrophobic bonds. These two work as a together as a unit alpha 1 beta 1 and alpha 2 beta 2 because of the strong hydrophobic bonds in between these alpha and beta chains. What happens? The two dimers are held together by weak ionic and hydrogen bonds. These two bonds are strong linkages hydrophobic bonds whereas, the dimers alpha 1 beta 1 alpha 2 beta 2 are linked by weak linkages weak ionic or hydrogen bonds. So, the hemoglobin is present in two, two forms one is T or taut form and another is R or relaxed form. In the T form it is uh, uh, deoxyhemoglobin form oxygen is not attached in the T form because it has got a low oxygen affinity in the T form. Whereas, once the oxygen molecule binds to this T form one molecule then there will be breaking of these weak bonds weak hydrogen ionic bonds are broken down we call it as a salt bridges they are broken down and that helps changes a conformation change in the hemoglobin and it forms a relaxed form and relaxed form is has got high affinity for the oxygen in a cooperative manner the uh, binding of first oxygen is little bit difficult but uh, further the, the oxygen binding is, is more easily it is bound to the hemoglobin in the R form. So, when you see at the oxygen dissociation curve in the x axis it is the partial pressure of oxygen in the y axis is the percent saturation of the oxygen. If you see at the 100 percent uh, PO2 level that is at the lungs the for almost all hemoglobin is 100 percent saturated when the PO2 drops down in the tissue level around 40 it releases the oxygen to the uh, tissues. So, it is bound completely in the uh, lungs and then it is given back to the tissues at the partial pressure of oxygen decreases. So, how it helps how that oxygen binding helps in this uh, cooperative binding and what are the changes it causes when the uh, binding of the first oxygen to the this uh, histidine of F8 histidine it binds to the iron of that uh, histidine and it pulls that iron it pulls the iron molecule which has bound to the distal histidine uh, F8 and then it pulls that iron into the plane for fire in plane and this causes the uh, breaking of the salt bridges and uh, that will change a conformational change in the hemoglobin molecule and more of it converts T form into R form and there is a high affinity for the oxygen. That is how this structure helps in its function that is binding of the oxygen. So, this proximal histidine and other residues they move into the plane of for firing ring and breaking the salt bridges and converting that T form of hemoglobin into R form. Once the oxygen is delivered it goes back into the T form. That is uh, about this hemoglobin and then we look at the structure of the collagen how the collagen structure helps its function. The basic function of collagen it gives uh, it is a fibrous protein it gives a tensile strength to the uh, tendons or it may be in present in different tissues in the gel uh, matrix. Uh, so, uh, what is the structure? It is a basically it is a alpha helical structure three polypeptide chains it is a triple helical structure three polypeptide chains are wound against each other. So, so in this uh, polypeptide chain uh, the majority of the amino acids are glycine, proline and lysine. So, glycine, proline and lysine are the amino acids around uh, 1000 amino acids if are there they are repeated sequences of thin, these amino acids. These amino acid structures play a very important role in the function of this collagen. What happens the proline, proline it's a, it, has, it has got a ring structure which helps in the causes the 
bends or kinks in the polypeptide chain. When the polypeptide chain is bent, there the proline molecules will be coming here. So, to give a kink or bend to the polypeptide chain, whereas glycine is the smallest amino acid, it fits in between the uh, uh, restricted places. When the these the polypeptide chains uh, are wound against each other in the alpha helical form, that winding part there is a restricted place and that is occupied by the glycine. And furthermore, this proline and glycines are undergo hydroxylation by the enzymes hydroxylases and those use the hydroxyl groups the proline and lysine and these hydroxyl groups they form a uh, uh, bind against each other and that hydrogen bonds are formed and then once this uh, uh, collagen structure is formed there will be cross linking of these fibers collagen fibers with the help of the enzyme lysyl oxidase. Overall the the function, the structure of this will help in its uh, function uh, in this collagen uh, structure. To summarize, <coughs> we discussed about the different structural organization of proteins. We saw primary structure which is uh, primarily held by the peptide bonds. Then we have secondary structures, alpha helix, beta sheets and we saw different super sec secondary structures also and then tertiary structure is a polypeptide chain with three dimensional structure example is myoglobin and then quaternary structures there are many polypeptide chains interacting to each other like example is hemoglobin. So, in hemoglobin structure we saw what is heme and what is globin and how it is heme is formed that protoporphyrin 9 and uh, that iron uh, molecule in the ferrous form and then we saw what are the T form and R forms of hemoglobin, how they help that uh, uh, weak bonds, hydrophobic bonds, uh, strong bonds, hydrophobic bonds between alpha and beta chains and in between the domains are weak ionic uh, uh, hydrogen bonds are present and those uh, bonds can be destabilized when the oxygen binds by pulling the ferrous iron into the plane of porphyrin ring and uh, destroying some of the salt bridges and converting T form into R form and help in binding of the oxygen to the hemoglobin. We also saw the oxygen dissociation curve also, how it uh, helps in binding at the high oxygen tension in the lungs and release of the same oxygen in the tissue level. Next we discussed about collagen structure, it is alpha helical structure, three polypeptide chains around 1000 amino acids and majority of them are glycine, uh, proline and lysine and uh, uh, the role of proline played helps in the giving a kink or bend to the collagen and uh, uh, the glycine being the smallest amino acid, it sits at the restricted places and then there is a hydroxylation between of uh, proline and lysine to form hydrogen bonds and the uh, fibrils are joined together by this uh, cross linking of fibrils takes place by lysyl oxidase. I hope this uh, lecture will help you to understand this different structural organization and its uh, how it plays its uh, role in functioning of that molecules. Thank you.